gospel of Jesus Christ has been watered down. It has been watered down until uh, it does not have the effect as it should. But when we take uh, man's hands and man's ideology out of uh, the, 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 the gospel of Jesus Christ and preach it and teach it the way God had given us to it, then we're going to witness the power of God unto salvation. Anytime we wrap our human minds around something that is so holy, immediately it becomes polluted. You can take fresh bread and just leave it out. And if you don't do anything to try to seal in the freshness, it will become stale. Amen. And, 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 so, and so I believe that I speak for a lot of people here in America, whether we are leaders or lay people, uh, it's time for us to keep the main thing the main thing. Amen. And because the only way that that man can experience hope and salvation and be delivered is through the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is no substitute. Irregardless of how intellectual we may be, uh, it will never take the place of the supernatural power of God. Intellect, sometimes if we are not careful, uh, it will develop a place of some type of assurance among those who love to be intellectually strong. And I don't make light of that, but however, your intellectual property, uh, properties or your wealth or the mundane things that you have in this earth realm will never give you salvation. Right. Amen. The salvation that Jesus Christ has given us, it liberated us, glory be to God, out of the hands of the enemy. And Jesus said that the enemy come to steal, kill, and to destroy. I don't care what your problem is. I don't care how big the enemy have made it to be. It is not larger. Neither is it bigger than God. Do you hear me what I'm saying? Amen. And we know it is by faith that we come to the Lord Jesus Christ and we accept him as Lord and Savior. It's something about that when the Holy Spirit began to prick your heart, it pricked your heart and bring you to a place where you want to confess. Have you ever just noticed some people that when they go to the doctor, they tell the doctor all of their business? I know some people like that. I have kin folks like that. They're going there, glory be to God, to, to uh, you know, to get some assistance to find out or to be diagnosed what's wrong with them. But they'll start telling them about the dog and the cat or my husband did this or my wife did that, my children and so forth and so on and praise God. But you know what? If we as a whole can give the doctors all that power, how much more we should give the Lord? The end, you, watch this. The devil uh, 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 or the, uh, the doctors, you're not devil. The doctors cannot write a prescription for a peace of mind. They, they can give you some mind-altering drugs or give you something to kind of take the edge off. But how many know that's not it? Amen. Jesus Christ is the only one that I know that is able to step right in the midst of our conflict, to step right in the midst of our sorrows, and he's able to touch it and make something out of it. Matter of fact, he's the only one that I know that is able, amen, to take our ashes and, and in return give us his beauty. Come on and give him a praise offering for that. He's the only one that I know he will never leave us, neither will he forsake us. When we have left our own self in our mind. Have you ever been around a, 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 a stay home runaways? They run away, but they stay home. How many times that you have ran away, glory be to God, but you stay home? How many times that you have gotten, you have gotten a divorce, praise God, but you stay right there? How many times you quit your job, but you stay right there? Well... God, our Father, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he don't care what your situation is, his love for you will never change. Didn't he prophesy through the mouth of the prophet and say, he said, I know the thoughts that I have concerning you, that they are the thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you that expected end. Come on and give the Lord Jesus Christ another praise for that. So that what he think of you will never change. His purpose that he have for you will never change. 
Well, pastor, you don't understand. I got myself in trouble. I've fallen down and can't get up. Well, I know somebody who can step right in the midst of it, baby, and get you right on up. And he will never judge you. He will never put you down. Come on now. We serve a Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, who have been touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Aren't you glad about that? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Well, you don't know what people are saying about me. You don't know what they're saying about me. Hallelujah. But the thing about it is we are never, we are to never allow people to put us in a place to stop us from serving the Lord. I don't understand it. I'm getting ready to mess up. I don't understand it. You know, there's a little buzz thing that has been going around now for a few years. I'm just, and they're saying something like this. I'm so sick and tired of church folks. Well, where did they put you? What revelation that you have that have started a revolution to bring about kingdom change? Somebody say, shut up and get healed. Hallelujah. That didn't cost you nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we are talking about uh, three dimensions of Christian maturity. And uh, I had my PPA to pass out uh, uh, some information. And uh, you can take it home and study it. Those who uh, have been with us for a while, you have had this material before talking about the 10 M's. We won't go through that, but this is all part of a Christian being mature. Amen? Uh, if you look at any company, any company, especially when it comes down to leadership, they're looking for the, the most qualified person. Why? They want what they have to enhance their business. Because when you enhance the business, it's saying that you have the business at, at best interest and you're making the business shine. Do you hear me what I'm saying? Glory be to God. Uh, well, our, our Heavenly Father, he had given us such a precious gift, which is Jesus Christ. And Jesus, in return, when he had uh, went back to the Father, he sent forth the Holy Spirit, amen, to aid and assist us while we're here in this earth realm. And the Holy Spirit is here to teach us and lead and guide us in, in all the ways of God while we're here. The Holy Spirit himself is the very spirit of God. Amen. He is the quickening spirit, and he is the spirit of truth, and he will aid and assist us while we're here. And so now while we're here, it's, it's not just, in other words, it's not good enough just to be saved. We need to study our word. Somebody may well say, well, pastor, I study my word, and I don't quite understand what I'm reading. I understand that. Uh, when uh, 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 there was a situation uh, in the New Testament, and, uh, and this eunuch, uh, he was on his chair, and he was reading the Bible, and there was this deacon. What was his name? Philip went where he was and asked him, uh, do you know what you're reading? He said, how can I except someone teach me? What are you saying? We need to come to Bible study. Amen. Amen. Well, pastor, I watch television. That's all well and good. You can watch television, CPN, and all those other so forth and so on. Thank God for them. They're ministering to people. Glory be to God. But it's nothing like coming to your own house to be discipled so that we can learn the kingdom way, so that we can continually be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Didn't Paul said it in the book of Romans? He said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the renewing of our mind is going to come by the word of God. The word of God gives us revelation. The word of God is the only thing that can, that can bring about change within us. So we should be excited, you see, because we're kingdom citizens and we need to think like act like, walk like kingdom citizens. We need to behave like kingdom citizens. And so now uh, uh, we talked on last Sunday concerning about uh, the first level of Christian maturity is disciple. And we have shared with you that disciple uh, is basically a Psalms 23 disciple. That's the first level. 
And the first level is the entry level when you're giving your heart over to the Lord. It doesn't matter what your status may be. It doesn't matter uh, 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 how you think of yourself. When you have given your life over to the Lord, let me say this, and it doesn't matter how young or old you are. When you're giving your life over to the Lord, uh, you have received salvation. Amen. Now you need to be taught. Now you need to be taught. It's like a newborn baby, a newborn baby that's birthed. It's birth in this earth realm, and a newborn baby has to be taught. If you don't teach a newborn baby and you, and you lead them, you let them stay by themselves, they will develop their own ideology. They will, they will develop and consider what is right and what is wrong. They will bring in a government which we, will, which we call anarchy, and it does not fit to those who are domesticated. Yeah. Have you ever just been around people who appear to be somewhat wild? Praise God. And, 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 and we're not putting them down, but you can take that same person, and if they will it to be to be taught or to come up under governors and tutors, amen, you will begin to uh, witness before your very eyes their mindset begin to change. If you, walk, if you work for Walmart, praise God, uh, you, cannot, you cannot go in there with a Kmart mentality. Yes, amen. Why? Because you, you, you got to have something in common, and to have something in common is to put forth your best foot and say, look, I'm working for this company. I need to understand the protocol of this company. I need to understand the mindset of this company, the nature of this company, so I can benefit the company. I want to be a solution and not a problem. We want to be a solution in the kingdom of God and not a problem. Is that okay? Amen. So now we talked about uh, the first level on the first dimension, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the discipleship. And so, uh, but let me, let me just give you, uh, let me regress just a little bit, and then we're going to go into the second level. Uh, we talked about dimensions, and dimensions is basically aspect, element, factors, and components. And so we talked about three dimensions of discipleship three dimensions of faith, and we're going to talk about three dimensions of manifestation. But we're still on the three dimensions of discipleship. And we talked about the first level is the entry level is that disciple who first give their life over to the Lord. And disciple being defined as this, is a learning student that follows. So this is why I say a disciple on entry level is a Psalms 23. And a Psalm 23 disciple, all they do is eat and they're being led. They eat and they follow. They eat and they follow. How do they compare to us in the natural? Well, when the baby is born, that baby have to eat and follow. Eat and follow as they're following their learning. But they have to eat. Why? So that they can what? Grow. If you don't eat, you don't grow. Praise God. So, so now uh, we don't want to become stuck on that infant level. Do you hear me what I'm saying? We don't want to be pediatric in our ways. This is why growth, Christian growth, is very important. Praise God. And one of the things that we have to do constantly and continually is that once people give their life over to the Lord, we must bring them to a place or start some type of Bible study so that they can become disciple, become God conscious. Somebody say God conscious. God conscious. It is important to become God conscious because, watch this, when we give our life over to the Lord, he did not promise us that we're going to always have sunshine. But he's going to give us a little bit of rain. But in the midst of the rain, glory be to God, the same God who's the God of the sun will understand that he also is the God of, God of, the, of the rain. Amen. He's the God of the day, as David said, and he also is the God of the night. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. When, the, when the day, I have 20-20 vision. When nighttime comes, we have to be more careful and we have to become more sensitive to our surroundings. Yes. But in the realm of the spirit, there is no day or night yes. because the glory of the Lord is brightening up our path. This is, where, this is why we have to become God conscious. Yeah. What would Jesus do in this matter? Come on, Come on now. Come on. Didn't God say, he said that my ways are not 
Your ways, neither my thoughts, your thoughts. Watch this now. He said it for a reason, simply because he really want our ways to become his ways. He want our thoughts to become his thoughts. Have you ever uh, grown up and uh, you was in some type of play? Uh, I've been in plays in school and, and uh, also uh, raised up in church. We had to say speeches. And uh, I, I mean, you know, when we was coming up, you couldn't get up there with, you know, with your notes. You had to learn that speech. Whether it was a short one or a long one. And you better not make a mistake. Praise God. What are you saying? What are you saying? Even when we was youngsters, uh, we, we, uh, they had opened up to us that it is very important to study. To study. Paul told Timothy, he said, study to show yourself approval unto who? God. Because I am accountable to God, primarily, I am accountable to God. So when I study to show myself approval unto God, amen, I'm going to speak what he have already spoken. I'm going to do what he have given me what to do. I'm going to behave in a manner that will bring honor to him and not shame. Our grandfather used to say this. He said, whatever you do, let it be real. Amen. When you sing, let it be real. Amen. When you pray, let it be real. Amen. When you clap your hands, let it be real. Amen. When you get up in the morning and get ready to come to church, let it be real. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Let it be real. <laughs> let it be real. Yes, whatever you do, let it be real. Hallelujah. So, so now, so now, um, uh, the scripture base that we have given uh, is coming from the gospel according to St. Matthew. It's the 13th chapter and the 23rd verse. Matthew 13, 23. When you find it, say amen. Notice what it says. But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word. And understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bring forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Now you see right there, he said, Here's the word and understand it. The word of God should be our greater influence. Amen. Amen. If I want to uh Go beyond a minute or two minutes up on the water. Oxygen or some type of, what they call it? Oxygen tank or so forth and so on. That's going to be my greater influence to keep me up on the water longer. If I want to ace my test, I must study to show myself approval because when I go to take that test, I want to score high. So spending time and not being deterred is going to be my greater influence. The material that is before me is my greater influence to cause me to ace it. Well, my relationship with the Lord, I must understand his word. This is why Jesus, many times, he had spoken into, uh, he spoke in parables and the parables, parables that he had uh, 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 spoken to them was parables or things that they was already confronted with. Amen. Some things may vary here uh, in America uh, because we don't have uh, what they call olive trees, if you will. I don't think we have olive trees over here, but uh, it's not predominant over here. It's not the main uh, 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 tree over here. So we will use other things. Now, now. That entry level of that disciple, this is where the final ground has to be tilted or broken up. How many have ever planted anything before? And there is process. There's, there's things that you have to do. You have to take that instrument, we call it a hoe, and, uh, and you break up that ground, chop it up, 
and you take your shovel, whatever the case may be, and you tilt it and you make it ready to plant your seed. Or if you're going to uh, 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 take a plant and take it out of its container and you're going to set it inside that ground. Praise God. So even with us, the final ground has to be broken up within us. I'm sorry I didn't bring the scripture with me, but he tell us to break up the final ground. Why? Because seeds of righteousness, seeds of the kingdom need to be sown into my heart. My heart is the ground, amen, that will cause production of the seeds that has been sown. Do you hear me what I'm saying? Yes. I was studying this morning, praise God, and uh, Jesus was talking uh, with a group of people. He says, he says, uh, other words, a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. Yes. But, a, but a good tree can produce good fruit. Yes. Praise God. And so all of us, and I want to encourage us, all of us w- should desire to produce good fruit. Yes. Touch your neighbor says, Let's produce good fruit. Now, it's a fight to produce good fruit because the challenges would come. But I don't want to go down that road right now. So now, so now the 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 first level of discipleship is the entry level. Uh, All they do is eat and follow, eat the word and follow. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Yes. Yes, amen. We follow our parents or. Uh, whoever raised us up, amen, we followed them. They fed us and we followed. They fed us and, and we followed. So now, uh, so now, at this level, at the first level of disciple, you can't really trust them at this point. Irregardless of how beautiful that baby is, that baby is. Can I fix it up? Irregardless of how beautiful your girlfriend is or your boyfriend is or your new wife or your new new husband, you may be a supervisor or some high-ranking position on your job, and the entry level of an employee that comes in, you cannot trust them fully at that point. Can I work this? Praise God. The principle is this, that as we are, as we become God conscious, then it will affect or transcend in everything in our life. Whether our job, our businesses, our marriages, single people, whatever the case may be, some of us are still stuck on the first level of discipleship. Getting quiet. So now, when we when we uh, look at maturity, it means mellowness, development, wisdom, experience, responsibility, and reliability. That's the type of disciple we want to be. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. That first level of discipleship, if the Lord was to try to get their attention four day in the morning, around one, two o'clock, and because they may not fully know him, they may just, just turn, turn their shoulder and, 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 and try to go back to sleep or get up and get some water and stretch and maybe get back in the bed because they haven't yet learned the ways of the Lord, how he move upon them. Isn't some relationships are like that? Whether it's on our job with our co-workers, come on, or those who are in place of authority that we're supposed to govern ourselves to, or in our homes, are you with me? Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you measure yourself. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that keep me out of trouble. All right. So we understand the first dimension of a disciple is a learning student that follows. 
who is basically a Psalms 23. And Psalms 23, if you read it, once again, you see all they do is eat and follow. Number two, steward. Steward, they are one who is trustworthy. Somebody say steward. Steward. Trustworthy. Trustworthy. Somebody say trustworthy. Trustworthy. Steward. Steward. Let's look at the word steward. It means have faith in, believe in, rely on, depend on. Have confidence in, bank on, and be assured about. All those other things, and I won't go down that whole list again from, from home to job. You measure yourself. Watch this. Because we're kingdom people. We're kingdom people. So God calls people who he can trust with his house with his people and his resources. That's a steward. Uh, my brother used to work in the jail system, and they do have a system that after a person is there for a while and they prove themselves, they make them, make them trustee. Why do they make them trustee? Because they have proven themselves. They can trust them more than they can trust the other inmate. Do you hear me what I'm saying? Uh, we have children's or those who are of, of us who, who, have, who have raised children's. Some of those kids you can trust more than others in certain things because they have proven themselves to be trustworthy. Isn't that right? Don't go to sleep on me. Hallelujah. <laughs> I must have your attention. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. And, and uh, so the second dimension to Christian maturity is from disciple to steward. A steward is somebody that has keys to the father's house. Disciples or their first level disciples, they don't have keys because they're not trustworthy as of yet. They're still on entry level because all their responsibility is to eat and follow. But stewards... They get keys. Stewards, they get keys because they what? Trustworthy. Somebody say trustworthy. trustworthy. When Jesus is talking to the disciples and saying, I give you keys to the kingdom, he promotes Peter to a steward right in front of the other disciples. Why? Because they didn't have the same revelation. When Jesus said, who do men Say that I am. Some said this. Some said that. One thing to the other. You know the scripture. But Peter was the only one said, for thou art the Christ. <laughs> the son of a living God. And Jesus began to reply and said, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, Peter. And because flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you, I'm giving you some keys. Because the keys we need is through by revelation. See, the power of intellect don't give you revelation. It's the Holy Ghost that gives you revelation. When I'm in trouble, I need revelation. When darkness is on every side, I need revelation. When I can't see my way, I need revelation. When I feel bombarded, I need revelation. Hallelujah. Revelation give me keys. And Jesus promoted him from a disciple, first level disciple to a steward. Hallelujah. Because he shared something totally different. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a praise offering for that. His response was totally different. Have you ever been around people and you can say certain things and their response is still the same? And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but sometimes we need to see some growth. Do you hear me what I'm saying? 
We, 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 we need to see some growth. And, uh, and, 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 and see, we can look at a troubling situation, but in the midst of looking at a troubling situation, we need revelation to see how God is going to move in it. How, come on now, watch this, watch this. How many times, how many times, and I can speak for myself, I went to the doctor because situations going on and the enemy really playing with my head. You ever been there before? Yes. Have you ever been there before? Yes. So I was troubled in my mind. Yes. Do you hear me what I'm saying? Yes. And so, so, so the enemy, he wants our soul or he wants to blemish our soul. Yes. Our soul is consist of what? Our mind, will, and our emotions. So now I'm all jacked up. I go to the doctor. Whatever was going on, I made it bigger than it really was. Well, Mr. Gay, we're going to run a few tests and we have let them draw blood and one thing to the other and blah, 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 and yada, 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 yada. Now the, re the results they're in. Everything is fine. Gosh, Doc, I needed that. For the country state, now you feel better. You feel like you can run on a little bit further. Huh? Praise God. So now, so now with that in mind, with that in mind, irregardless of the situation, when we take it to Jesus. The old folks used to say, just a little talk with Jesus. <laughs> we'll make everything all right. You know how it was that when you was little, and, and, and uh, especially me, the lights was turned off. Mama! <laughs> Mama come and say, what's wrong with you, boy? I saw something. <laughs> Turn the lights on. There's nothing in here. <laughs> That's what you say. <laughs> no, no. But I kept calling her until she came to the point until she was able to soothe my doubt and calm my fear. Turn the light on. Come on. Where you saw that thing? Come on. Uh, uh, come on. Come on. <laughs> Everybody know the closet syndrome, right? <laughs> it's in that closet. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. See, there's nothing in here. <laughs> now you're happy you can go to sleep. How much more? How much more? When we take it to the Lord in prayer, how much more we can call on that wonderful name? How much more? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those are keys. We can trust him with our troubles. We can trust him when things appear to be bad. And he'll take and he will give us excellent results. He can take a jacked up bad situation, come on now, and work a miracle out of it. Do you hear me what I'm saying? So stewards have keys. So Jesus says, he say, I'll give you the keys to the what? Kingdom. Because now I can trust you. Amen. I trust you with the kingdom. A first level disciple, they, 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 they're not quite ready yet. But when you get to the place through by your experience, Amen. With God and man, praise God, and you begin and you continue to trust him by faith, you'll find yourself growing in the things of God. But you got to stay in that word. You cannot, you cannot entertain yourself. And the reason why I can say it, and it's probably nobody never did it in here but me. You're going through, and first thing I turn turn on was the television. Hour has gone by, two hours gone by, three hours, almost the whole day. I can sleep real good now during the daytime. Nighttime come, can't sleep, turn the television back on again. Like the television is a savior. Like the television has what we need. Can't you see, can't you see how we think if we're not careful? 
This is why this is why we we need keys to the kingdom of God, that whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose here on earth is already loosed in heaven. But it comes through by trusting him. So the Lord is saying, look, I want to trust. I want you to trust me when you can't go to sleep. I want you to trust me when you are going through. Because when you do all of these things, when you're experiencing conflict or the enemy is causing conflict, I'll give you keys to unlock some things. To unlock some things. Hallelujah. I'm pausing and I'm thinking about those keys, Ella Betty. Seriously, I'm I'm thinking about those keys. Sometimes the key can be right there, and I'm speaking from experience, but because I have magnified the situation, I wasn't able to recognize the key. Have you ever experienced the still, small voice, hindsight 2020, and then you realize, man, that was God speaking? (laughs) Have you ever rebuked God before, but yet you thought it was the devil? (laughs) And after you grew up a little bit, say, oh, my goodness, don't y'all look at me like you're crazy now. You thought you was rebuking the devil and you was rebuking God. <laughs> Hindsight 2020, as you grow a little bit, you're growing into discipleship and now you become trustworthy. And the Lord said, by the way, two years ago, that was me speaking to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Glory be to God. Yeah. Now you got it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is why it's so important. To have the mind of Christ. Let me let me uh, let me read something before we go further. Uh, let me read something here. Let you know that there's nothing new up under the sun. Turn with me to the book of Hebrews, the fifth chapter, and the eighth verse. When you find it, say Amen. Hebrews 5 and 8. We got it? Let's read it together. Ready? Read. Though were a son, yet obedience by... Who is he talking to here? Who is he talking about? Huh? Somebody say Walmart? See, right there was a good temperature check because you don't even know the author of this book who he was referring to. You see, let me say something. This is just a commercial for the kingdom of God. You got to get out of the book of Psalms. Every time you get in trouble, you want to run to the book of Psalms? Thank God for the book of Psalms. But the whole Bible is good. Yes, amen. I just want to say that for the kingdom's sake. Though were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things he suffered. It's referring to Christ Jesus. Jesus didn't do anything wrong, but just like any human being, he had trying moments and in in his suffering, he learned obedience because he chose or he had chosen to trust God in the midst of his suffering. So in the midst of our suffering, we are learning uh, obedience. Those are what? Keys. Brother Sexton, successful businessman, car body shop. Some new kid come off the off the street. 
wanting to learn the trade. You wouldn't immediately give him that spray paint thing and go out there and paint one of those cars that you got. Geico has hired you or uh, uh, some other uh, 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 company, all state or whatever. But you, you wouldn't allow him to do that, right? But but he have to he have to prove himself that he can be trustworthy to 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 paint that car and to make it look brand new so that it can be acceptable, so that you can get paid. Hallelujah. You see, the principle is still the same. Let's go to Galatians, the fourth chapter. We're just about there. Galatians 4. Galatians 4 and verse 1. When you find it, say amen. This is the King James Version. When you find it, say amen. Let's read it together, and we're going to read verse 1 and 2. Ready? Read. Now I say... That the heir, as long as he is a child, different, <laughs> though he be Lord of all. The second verse, but is up under <laughs> until <laughs> of who? <laughs> of who? <laughs> of the father. So now, Jesus, our Savior and Lord, this is who it's referring to. He was up under tutors and governors until the time appointed. His gift did not qualify him. Him being the son of God did not qualify him. If he had all the money in the world, it did not qualify him. He was up under governors and tutors. Watch this now. God used earthly people to become tutors and governors for Jesus until the time appointed. Amen. How much more you and I? Amen. Until the time appointed. Appointed for what? To be about his father's business. Amen. The business that Jesus had to attend to was very serious. Watch this. The business that God, our father, had, has given us in this earth realm is very serious. Hallelujah. Let's go to St. John, the eighth verse. St. John, eighth chapter, I'm sorry, and look at verse 31 and 32. St. John, eight, verse 31 and 32. When you find it, say amen. Let's read it together. Read it, read. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, if you continue, then are you my indeed. And, and the truth, ye are you shall know the truth, and the truth shall, some translations say set you free. But I like the making because we are a work in progress. Hallelujah. Can you thank the Lord for that? Amen. The truth will make you free. The truth of the matter that as I continue in the Lord Jesus Christ being discipled, I'm going to be set free from this worldly mind. This mind is going to be here, but in the midst of trouble, amen, I will get the mind of the Lord. Isn't that what? Um, uh, uh, King David did when he was uh, at this certain place when he got in there uh, what was the name of that little city Ziglag everybody knew about Ziglag man the, 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 the people came in there and burned up everything they had taken the wives and the children and so forth and so on and in the midst of the conflict or the chaos some of David's very own men they saw and they had that desire to kill him David concern wasn't about his life pertaining to his men. He knew if he can just get the mind of God. Woohoo! When you're being threatened, whispers going around, let's get David. 
But glory be to God. And there was a priest. He didn't ask the priest to intercede. Other words, let me borrow your ephod. <laughs> he put that ephod on and he began to pray. And we need to pray until something happens. We need to pray and keep praying until it happens. Touch your neighbor and say, let's don't get lazy in praying. And God, our Father, spoke to him. He said, go pursue, overtake. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. So this is why it's so important as I prepare to close uh, dealing with the uh, uh, steward. Uh, a steward is trustworthy. The Lord is wanting us to become trustworthy. And we become trustworthy with our everyday life. You don't have to sign up for no membership to a gym to become trustworthy. Amen. I promise you that uh, where life is, uh, you're going to be tried. When you're dealing with human beings, you're going to be tried. Amen. Uh, Rever is on our job and our businesses and our homes and our marriages among our family members or friends. Life is going to your life is going to experience some type of challenges. But if you can just get the mind of God, if you can believe God through it all. Oh, yes. Amen. Praise God. Uh, Dr. Sandra and I, we had a chance to watch this um, this movie called War Room. War Room is an excellent uh, movie. Uh, uh, I personally like Fireproof better than that one, but both of them, I give them two thumbs up. But the thing, the message is this, is that, is that somebody in the marriage had to be humble enough to seek the Lord. Somebody in your business need to be humble enough to seek the Lord. You're going to get it. Somebody in the family need to be humble enough to seek the Lord. You, you ain't got it yet. Somebody in the community need to be humble enough to Hallelujah. To seek the Lord. Because when we seek the Lord, we are drawing our attention away from the problem and we are focusing on our Heavenly Father. We are the beneficiaries and the recipients to everything that Christ has suffered, bled, and died and risen for. We are of the royal priesthood. And if we are of the royal priesthood, what belongs to Jesus belongs to us. But we got to graduate from that first level of discipleship. Don't tell me, praise God, you've been saved all these long years and you're still on first base on the first level of discipleship. Don't tell me you're still having problems on your job. Praise God, you went to this job, there's problem, that job. You went to 20, 30 jobs, and praise God, and you're always saying they don't like me. No, honey, you need to open up your eyes. You need to humble yourself and let the Lord give you some keys. Don't tell me, glory be to God, you've been in a marriage and praise the Lord and it's still the same old thing. You're still at first level and there's no growth. Something is wrong. You jiggling and jerking fall out on Sunday and when you get home, you act like you done ate some super glue. Do you hear me what I'm saying? Hallelujah. But Billy, you playing for praise God. So, 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 so it's something, it's something about when we humble ourselves. If you grow, you can go. I'm going to say it again over here. If you grow, you can go. If you seek him, you will find him. If you ask, he will give it. If you knock, the door shall be opened. From first level discipleship to become a steward means that you're trustworthy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Moses didn't know that he was going to have all that trouble with Pharaoh, but God processed him for 40 years in the wilderness. And he sent him right back to Pharaoh and told him, God said, let my people go. And Pharaoh looked at him, you must be a fool. You must be crazy. 
I, I have all of you, I have all of these Hebrews as slaves, and they continue doing work at cheap labor, and you want me to, God say, let them go? Huh. But he didn't take no for an answer. He didn't go running to his mother. He didn't go running to his father. He didn't go running to his wife. He went back to God. He reported right back to God. What are you saying? If they tell you something and you know God have already spoken to you, what's going what's to come into being, what's going to uh, take place, and if they say no, you just go back and say, God, they say no. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to mess up. Don't go running to McDonald's and try to eat yourself comfortable because they told you no. Leave those twinkies alone, glory be to God. Leave those donuts alone, glory be to God. Don't get up late at night because you can't sleep because they say no, and now you, you acting like a thief in your own kitchen, want to eat up everything. Now your blood pressure high. And now you fill in the blank, glory be to God. But you take that no and you go right back to God. Because he's the only one who can take a no and get results out of it. Because God has the last say so. His word is final. And it is amen. This is the mindset, prophetess, that I believe that the Lord is saying in this hour, we need to become influenced by the word of God. Not just speaking the word, amen, but allowing the word to become reality in us. Because you're going to be tried. In my closing, Jesus said this. He said, if any man shall, shall hear these words of mine and do them not, would be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. Come on now, can I fix it up? The storm of life came, the winds blew, the rain came, and it beat upon that house, and that house fell because it was not found on a solid rock. It was found on soft sand. And then Jesus, almost in the same breath, and said, if any man should hear these words of mine and do them, he said, I would liken him into a wise man. Look at your neighbor and say, you wise. Look at somebody else and say, you wise. Which, which built his house upon the rock. Those same winds blew. The rain came. Come on now. The storm came. And it beat up against the house. And when it was all over with, the house was yet standing. The house was yet remaining because it was found upon the solid rock. Jesus is that rock, family. Jesus is that rock. Some of you might be going through right now. Say, Pastor, it feel like I'm sinking in, in quicksand. I'm telling you there's help for you today. Tell somebody, say, there's help for you today. Jesus is ready to rescue you just like he rescued Peter. When Peter had asked to walk out on the water and Jesus bid him to come, he said, come. Peter took his eyes off of Jesus for, 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 for about a second or so, and he began to sink in the water, begin ready to drown. And he cried out and said, Lord, save me. That's all you have to say, whoever you are. Just say, Lord, save me. Amen. 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 He can save you from a crumbling marriage. He can save you from a business that's about to turn upside down. He can save you, glory be to God, from your own self. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord, save me. Lord, you know, sometimes I act like I'm schizophrenic. Save me. Lord, sometimes I act like I'm, I'm bipolar, not bipolar. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, save me. Hallelujah. I'm not liking myself right now. Lord, save me. He's able to do it. He's able to take your, lemon, your lemons and turn into lemonade. He's able to take your sorrows and give you joy. Yes. Hallelujah. What a friend we have in Jesus. Yes. All of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands?
in his midst right now. We can just give it to the Lord. Song we used to sing years ago, and I gave it to the Lord, and he worked it out. Hallelujah. Touch somebody and say, he will work it out. But it's going to take something on your part. You got to trust him. You got to trust him. Well, pastor, you don't understand. I tried trusting him and nothing didn't happen. You just couldn't see it. Hallelujah. Just keep trusting him. You know, when people get tired now, they're drinking this little bottle called five hours or something. What's the name of that little drink? Energy drink. Your energy drink. Praise they, they Look, they will drink that energy drink. Why? To give them energy so that, so that they can carry out the rest of the day. Look, all you got to do is drink on Jesus. Oh, yes, amen. And he will give you the strength to carry out the rest of the day. Hallelujah. Even if it's one day at a time, you can say, the Lord, he brought me over yesterday. Lord, I know you're going to give me the strength to do it today. Hallelujah. This problem looked like a mountain, but glory be to God, in the sight of you, you already see me on the other side. I choose to, to look through your eyes, to see through your eyes. I don't know who you are, but the Lord is, has touched someone here. Amen. And I want to say again, he loves you with an everlasting love. There's nothing that you have did that is so bad. God will never turn his back on you. Number one, God said, let us create man in our image and after our likeness. You are in the image of God. And all, all we need now is just a different spirit in us. Amen? Some people call it the Holy Spirit, and, and some of us call it the Holy Ghost. Amen? You just need help in this earth. In this body, there's always a negative pull to the world pertaining to this body because this body came from the earth, and the earth is going to return. Hallelujah. But there's a soul that is living on the inside of the body, and that soul belongs to God. It don't belong to Buddha. It don't belong to Muhammad. It belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And when we are reborn again, he has given us a spirit that is connected to the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. That is able to minister to our soul and say, peace, be still. In the midst of a storm, amen, you can find rest. That might be you. Jesus said, if any man should come after me. Referring to himself. He said, deny yourself. Take up your cross. Whatever your cross may be. And follow me. Referring to Jesus. That's all we have to do. Can you give me something? Can you give me something else? Yes, God. And we want to give you that opportunity. Every head is bowed. Eyes are closed. You sense the Lord dealing with your heart right now. He's knocking on your heart right now. Maybe you want to make a fresh commitment. Pastor, I gave my life over to the Lord, but I just need to make that fresh commitment. Maybe this is your first time. Maybe you feel as though that you're on the verge of backsliding. Maybe you're falling down and you can't get up. That's the perfect storm, perfect situation so that the Lord can show up, and all it takes is your faith. If that's you from all of those categories, I want you to just lift your hands right now at me with your head bowed, eyes closed. If that's you, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I sense there's more. You don't understand, Pastor. I'm in a relationship, and I don't know how to get out of it. I feel the Lord tugging at my heart. That's good. Watch this. Even in the midst of your situation, God is still tugging at your heart. I ought to tell you something. He will come right where you are. Amen. You don't have to put on a special suit or a special dress. To come to the Lord to get your to get your life changed, to give your heart over to Him. He accepts you just where you are. Hallelujah. 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 
Pastor, I made some bad choices, and, 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 and I'm afraid to get out because of what people may say. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the Lord has already gone before you. And he's backing you up right now. If that's you, come on and lift your hands, if that's you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Now, those, yes, come on. Now, come on. Let, let me hear you. Let me hear you. Those who have lift your hands, now I want you to take that stand to your feet. Come on. Stand to your feet right now. If they're standing, let's get a Lord of praise off. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 There may be someone watching right now. Continue to stand. And the word has moved upon your heart and you want to make that change. We're getting ready to pray a prayer all together along with them. A prayer of rededication. A prayer of repentance. Repentance always get God's attention. Matter of fact, repentance is one of the keys that get us on the entry level of discipleship. Repeat that for me with our hands raised. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you now just as I am. I come bringing myself before you, acknowledging that I have failed acknowledging I need your help I come with repentance forgive me Lord I'm sorry Lord for not trusting you I'm sorry Lord and I thank you now that you are touching me you are embracing me and you are drawing me by your spirit, I receive now to myself that fresh touch, the fresh breath of God to revive me, to resuscitate me, to reset me, to rejuvenate me. I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord Jesus. I glorify you that you have not given up on me in Christ Jesus' name. Come on, let's give the Lord Jesus Christ a praise offering. Surrender to you. Everybody stand to your feet if you can. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I to you. Hallelujah. Can we give him a wave offering? Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Listen. This daughter right here uh, by the evangelist. What is your first name, dear? No. The Felicia. Felicia, just right where you're standing. This is what I sense by the Spirit of the Lord. You're on a journey of recovery. I don't know what you're recovering from. That's none of my business. But the Lord shows me your heart. He's literally showing me your soul where the enemy has came and, and tried to sow terror in the midst of your heart to cause confusion and so forth and so on. But I hear the Lord says that he have already gone before you and he is your real guard. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say that he's getting ready now to download joy and peace. 
He's getting ready to download confidence and assurance. The Lord said that he loved you with an everlasting love. And nothing will never change that. I hear that for you by the Spirit of the Lord. I hear by the Spirit of the Lord that also that even, even your mindset or, or the way that you think about things, it's, it's, it's almost as though that you have come to an end of a sentence and it's almost like we sentence our own self. And I'm not saying that you send yourself to this or that, but I hear the Lord say that he's going to stretch out the sentence. He's going to add word to the sentence. He's going to put a but in there, a conjunction, hallelujah, that's going to lead into something that's going to be bright for you. This is what I hear by the Spirit of the Lord. Come on, let's lift our hands one more time. My dear sister right here, what is your first name? Yes, ma'am. What, Ma'am? Sherry Ann, that's a beautiful name. Both names are beautiful. Sister Sherry Ann, this is what I see. The Lord is showing me that you've been in a wilderness or in a desert, just kind of forward willing across the rough terrain. And the Lord said that even in the midst of the rough terrain, you have learned how to survive. The Lord said, even when you have thought about giving up on yourself, and the Lord said, but you didn't give up because there was that flicker of hope on the inside. I hear the Lord say that he's getting ready now to bring you to an oasis. And this oasis is going to reset some things in your life. This oasis is going to refurbish some things. And I hear the Lord say that he's going to give you joy. Girl, I literally see you dancing. I don't know if you dance. But I see you dancing before the Lord. I see a cloud lifting. I see a cloud lifting off of you. And if I be a man of God, you notice within the next seven to nine days, thing is going to forever increase for the better for you. This is the word of the Lord unto you. Will you just lift your hands before him right now and just tell him thank you? Come on, just tell him thank you. Say thank you, Lord. That's it, that's it. Thank you, Lord. Come on and tell him again. In your own way. Come on, come on, come on. Help out, help out, help out. Come on, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He's going to cast in your sorrow for peace. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. The enemy have tried to make you feel as though you was homeless in your mind. But the Lord said that he is your shelter. Hallelujah. You watch and see. Watch and see. Come on, let's give the Lord Jesus Christ another praise offering. Stiffness across the shoulder and neck. Someone came in here with that. It should be gone by now. Who, who is that? Who is that? Well, just wave at me right now. Is you? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. We want to bless you by the Spirit of the Lord. Father, your people are hungry. You have given us all ample enough time to prove to ourselves the things of you, they are life and godliness. The things that are of you, Father, it always encourage us. There's times we have proven to ourselves that when we lean to our own ways, we get boggled down. We get stuck. We try to find our way out, and we work hard, Father, to try to, to try to even work our way out of a wet paper bag, but we can't do it. 
There's times we have gotten ourselves in a maze and we couldn't find our way out of it. But Father, we thank you that as we all have cried out, Lord, with repentance of some kind of way, Lord, that you're calling us to be stewards. You're calling us to be trustworthy, that you can give us keys to your kingdom. You can give us keys and you can trust us with your resources. You can trust us, Father God, Lord, in our marriages. You can trust us with our families, trust us on our jobs, on our business, our community. You want to trust us, Lord. Father, we cry to you because we need you. We desire you. Now, even now, by the Spirit of the Lord, Father, I release that joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. I thank you, Father, for the river that flows from your throne above down to us. I thank you for life that is in the Holy Ghost. And I thank you, Father, Lord, that your people by faith will desire the appetite for your word. To eat your word, to eat your word, to eat your word, to eat your word and desire revelation of your word, revelation of your word, revelation of your word that give us keys that whatever we shall bind here on earth is already bound in heaven. Why? Because you can trust us. Whatever we lose here in earth is already loosed in heaven. Why? Because you have given us keys to your kingdom. Thank you, Father, for every marriage. Thank you for every family, every single person. Thank you for every job and every business. Thank you for our homes, Lord, and our communities. Thank you, Lord, that we're able to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he hear our faintest cry. Thank you, Father, for touching us and assuring us of your love. In Christ Jesus' name. Now may the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, do rest, rule and abide upon us now henceforth and forevermore. And everybody says, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. God bless you.